Check out my brand new sound design course along with all of my samples and presets by using the links below. Okay, we're gonna make maybe a stamped bass house song maybe. Okay, so I didn't record any of that, but basically I have this. I'm gonna go samples only. If I wanna use a synth, I'm gonna use a synth, but we're gonna mainly do samples and I dragged in this. So the plan of attack is to do this drop and then I'll make like a little break build. Maybe I'll do like a little four bar build for fun. Maybe I'll get like a vocal or something. I really don't know yet, but I wanna make something different. So maybe I'll do the thing where you just go like this and then we'll put stuff in between that. Melodic stuff, maybe, I uh, don't really know yet. Okay, so we'll go bump, bump, do-do-do-do, bump, do-do-do-do. Okay, that'd be good. Yo. Okay, maybe we'll just get some type of bass going. So probably something deep. Can I make that punchier? Yep. This bass line isn't really that interesting, me writing it. I was just getting some type of idea down, but there's actually one really important thing that changed the entire sound and rhythm of the song coming up very soon. But for right now, I'm just gonna get an idea going. That guitar loop mixed with a shaper box that's coming up in just a second. I was really trying anything. I was just like, what could be cool that's a little different, a little experimental, and you'll see exactly where that leads to. I feel like this could be. I feel like that could be cooler. This needs to go down eight. And I'd like to add another layer on top of that. And I guess we'll do the little reverb sweep up right here. Wait. I don't know anything. I don't know what I'm doing right now, which is kind of good because if I knew what I was doing, I would try to sound like somebody else, if that makes sense. I think it's off, like, like off the thing, off the grid, but... It, need, it needs fix. I could tell I might just interchange this with a synth so I can control the the chord of it more, the sound of it, but it might be cool. So I'm going to keep it going. I think like if I interchange these sounds with something cooler, it could work, but these could, I still have these up here. Once again, here's what it sounds like without anything. I wish you could interchange like the shapes. Can I? Wait, you could probably copy shapes, I assume. Work. Yes. Bang. Like, we could maybe change it up, mix it in. I don't know exactly. Turn the drive down. So the reason that I wanted to be able to put that same shape in different type of effects inside of Shaper Box is so everything can move in unison, if you will. Everything can move in the same direction. So if I wanted to add a distortion unit, the distortion would come up and down just like that filter would. And, or if I, I think I did do it with the volume. So once again, a lot of this track was just experimenting. There's pretty much like a few main things that did stick, but a lot of this, which I'm not going to show, was just trying things out and seeing what could work and what didn't work. Okay, now I think we could get the crop up a little bit. Okay, 
Okay, now I'm going to get a little maybe creative and just... So I can't exactly explain what I'm doing here because there was really no exact thing I was doing. A lot of this is experimenting and this was really just, I was like playing FL Studio on sandbox mode. Like it was just do do whatever, find whatever sound you can get and make it work somehow. And it's actually quite fun because you get, you can, you can get so many different things that you would have never thought of if you were to have thought of it in your head. It's just having fun and messing around really. The filter type is going to be massive as well. And for the for the sound. Keep our tools over here. Keep okay, we got like a reverse synth shot as well. We got this stab, which is like a chord stab, which here's our main stab. I'll eventually interchange some stuff out like like the drums and just other things, but so maybe right, let's add some of these other pieces in here. What's this? No. I'm like making a chord with synth shots. Actually, we could take a kick. We'll match it up with the bass with them. Just on the offbeats. It adds like that click to it, which is good. So I forgot to record my screen there once again, but I added these stabs on there. Well, that stab just on top of that. Fab, fab. Fab. So the vocal shots here, I had Seth Hills in mind because he's always throwing in like random one shot vocals. He obviously uses his own, which I don't recommend that you use the ones he uses, but I recorded some of these for Nitric and I just wanted to add some of those in kind of like what Mo Falk does as well just throwing them in on the offbeat here and there just to uh, change it up okay white noise white noise white noise oh where I put it noise all right so I think I worked on it for let's see here I worked on it for a total of well it says 12 but probably like 11 because i was just listening back to it a lot so 11 or so hours on this and i think i stopped recording when i was at like six or so like what, what i did a lot was I, I did a lot of experimenting just trying different things and to sit you guys through all of that would be so much but um for example one of the other ideas i tried was almost like a brooks style song like a brooks collab i guess you could say So what stayed and what didn't stay? So what you guys saw, every, that was pretty much the main thing. So we have the stab. Actually, here's a little demo of the drop, real quick. So you guys can tell, it's just more of like a fleshed out version of what you guys heard. But it sounds pretty much the same, even though I worked on it for a little more. But we have the stabs here. I just added more layers on top of that. The main stab is still predominantly the main sound. Just some extra layers, layers underneath of that. And the drums are pretty much the same. It's nothing to write home about. Same, same stuff. Um, and also, this is pretty much the same as well. I did bounce it out with audio just because I wanted to see what it looked like on the grid. Because I kept saying it, it didn't sound like it was on grid. But I think it's just swung a lot. And the sweeping is actually really cool. So that's that. I think it's just way better to bounce things to audio though. So uh, it's just it's just way easier to work with things like this that are definitely like that sound weird. I think it's way better to put it into audio. So that's that. The bass line is the exact same. That's just going along with the uh, sweeping rhythm. And then I layered it with a little bass shot from the Mesa of Luar free pack. Giving it some grit there. And there's actually one main part that I did here. And this came from just trying a bunch of different 
types of leads and things like that because I liked how the drop sounds with just that synth chord thing sweeping. I think it sounds pretty cool, but there still had to be like a lead element or some kind of top tonal element. And what I decided to do was take a pluck, and this is just a tonal perk from Nitrix. So percussion, distorted, reverb, but that's like already in the sample. And that's just playing along the D sharp note. And then I'm pitching it up and down to make it more interesting. And then underneath that, I have another layer, which is me hitting a pop because I wanted it to have that like a metallic type of sound to it. And you could emulate that inside of like Serum Effects or Serum with like the reverb filter and things like that. But um, I find it way easier to just use a actual sample. But I don't want any of that low end. So there's some type of tonality to that. But I just cut out all the low ends and I'm just left with this nice, well, nice, if you want to call it nice, but this, this high end. And it sounds pointless like that. But if you layer it on top of the actual... Slight difference, probably not that big of a deal, but I like to, um, I thought it was cool to do that. And then I have an extra lead layer. This is the synth shot from Nitric. And um, and that's just happening after the first four bars there just to evolve it. I'll evolve that lead a little bit because if I just kept that going the whole time, staying the same, I think it could get a little stale. But this is also just like a mini type of drop. It's not like a full fleshed out drop. And then below that is this percussion layer. And this is, almost playing on the offbeat of the lead sometimes, but it just adds this more of like a natural drum type of sound. And then this section up here is, I put it together, it's like ear candy, but it's really not supposed to be ear candy. It's just a bunch of little things. And they're just like little bits here and there. And like the way I added those was, I, that's why I like having a pack on the left side. Like if you're working in Ableton or FL Studio, that's why I love working with packs. And for this one, I use Nitric. You can obviously use any sample pack you like. Um, but things like Splice, I feel like they do slow your workflow down a little bit. You can get a lot of variety if you use Splice. But if I just want sounds that are cool, like for example, for, for this song, I went into the synth shots inside of Nitric. And just picked out the cool ones, threw them in there, and made them work. And that's how you get almost like random songs. But I find it quite fun doing it that way. So that's like the ear candy. We'll call it that. And that's really it. For the buildup, so I'll just breeze through this very quickly. So the main thing is just this D minor chord. Then everything's just revolving around that in terms of atmosphere, things like that. I'll gradually add things in. And yeah, so that's this entire drop. It was more so just trying things out. Like I said, picking sounds out and then making them work. It was like the reason I liked making this type of music is because you don't know what's going to happen because anything's on the table. Could be Because if you're making, let's say, like a future bass song or something like that, I feel like you generally know what it's going to sound like for the most part. You, pr you pretty much know what it's going to sound like when you have the main idea down. But here I was just trying out so many different things and so many random things. I was looking for something that was a little off the wall and I think I might have achieved that. So if you guys like this one, let me know down below and here's the full playthrough for you. Yeah. 